She got some pickup. All right. So first impressions on this uh, Speed Triple RS 1200. Uh, it does not feel like the previous generation Speed Triple. Uh, the way I kind of see that previous Speed Triple, it always sort of felt to me like it was the bulldog of the family. Very, uh, very wide tough stance, lots of torque, where the street triple was the very nimble, lightweight, or uh, if we're doing dog analogies here with the bulldog of the speed, the uh, the street's more of the greyhound, the quick, nimble, uh, thinner profile. This new speed is almost, almost as nimble and compact feeling as the street triple. It's uh, a little quicker than the street though. So smooth. Gosh, these triples are absolutely amazing. Every single Triumph triple, doesn't matter whether you're looking at the Trident, the Speed, the Street, the Tiger, the Rocket, the power delivery is absolutely incredible. Get on a few curves here. Very flickable, very lightweight. The new Street Triple RS running the same suspension and brakes basically as the previous generation. Speed Triple RS, uh, Olin's front and rear, Brembo's, uh, it's really hard to uh, upgrade and get anything much better. So happy they stayed with that configuration. What uh, has changed is definitely the profile, that uh, lighter, more nimble feel. It just dips into the corners. Doesn't have that thick feeling that the previous generation speed did. The handlebars are actually a little bit wider than the previous generation speed, which I like a lot. Uh, Gives it a little bit more leverage on the bars, but you're not uh, you're not talking about anything that makes your ergonomics awkward. The Street Triple has always felt ergonomically larger to me than the Speed. The Speed kind of locked you into one riding position. I'm not a tall guy, but a lot of taller riders uh, actually feel more cramped on the Speed Triple. 1050 this 
gives you that capability to stretch out just like the uh, Street Triple RS does. Gives you a little bit more room in the seat where you can move forward and back. Incredibly comfortable. So if you are a taller rider and the street has been comfortable for you and maybe the previous generation speed was not, definitely take a look at this new speed. weight you know somehow they've managed to pull another 22 pounds uh, from the previous generation speed to this new speed previous generation speed was advertised at 416 pounds dry uh, this new 1200 is actually advertised at 437 wet so but I you know I'm halfway decent at math so taking that 416 taking out 22 pounds if you want to compare dry weight you're going from that 416 down to 394 pounds dry where the street triple rs is sitting at 366 i believe all right let's take a look here See what we got on the display so we've got our ride modes road rain sport and then there is a track mode in there but since i'm riding we can't change into track mode won't allow us to do that uh, when you do change mode it wants you to close the throttle to confirm close the throttle and you're now in sport mode Hundred and seventy seven horsepower on tap, ninety two pound foot of torque, and a bike that has a dry weight of under four hundred. As you can imagine, power to weight ratio is absolutely incredible, and they are uh, accelerating quite quickly. I'm not sure what the zero to sixty times are, quarter mile, or any of that, but I can tell just riding on the street everyday ride which you're going to encounter most of the time my gosh incredibly smooth very linear power the speed has retained its same 4.1 gallon fuel capacity so there is no difference there compared to the previous generation Fuel consumption it's going to be about the same if you care about that uh, it's got some nice features like cruise control standard you've got your ride modes digital display is pretty awesome to be able to go through um, might do that when we're stopped here in a minute fully adjustable levers their uh, bar end mirrors triumph bar and mirrors are always awesome every mirror I've ever ever uh, experienced from triumph is top-notch they don't vibrate they don't uh, move around very stable very good visibility note on this thing is absolutely exhilarating I think there's going to be a lot of uh, controversy over their exhaust change they went from the twin undertail exhaust canisters to the single side mounted the center of gravity Definitely improved by getting those two exhaust pipes. It's got some 
good pickup. Mm, quick shifter is amazing. Didn't even honestly get on it all the way there. That was a uh, reserve still a little bit. Personally, would have uh, preferred to see an exhaust more similar to the Street Triple with that shorty uh, short pipe that just barely protrudes from underneath the belly. Uh, that's my preferred style. I don't like the big exhaust canister, especially on this one with the single sided swing arm. I really wish they would have exposed that rear wheel. That wasn't one nice feature about the uh, high mounted exhaust on the previous generation because you got to see the beautiful tire and wheel combination. This it uh, hides a little bit. Where a uh, shorter stubby exhaust definitely would have opened that up. Uh, hopefully there'll be some aftermarket options Actually, not a bad bike just to cruise on. Very comfortable. My initial reaction looking at all the specs and feeling the initial acceleration is nobody needs this. This is not a bike that needs to be on the street. I enjoy smaller displacement motorcycles. I like pushing a bike hard. Uh, this thing is so nuts. There's I don't know. It's excessive. There's no other. There's no other way to put it. Um, you can't sugarcoat it. This engine is absolutely excessive. But with that said, excessive can be fun. Ooh, excessive can be very fun. But at the same time, just taking it out and cruising on it. Enjoying uh, a little bit of ride time is comfortable. All right, so taking a quick look at the display here. Uh, so we went over, it does have the cruise control. You've got your ride modes. So now that we're stopped, you can see you've got the sport, road, rain, a rider selectable where you've got the capability to set it exactly the way you want as well as a track mode and then back to sport. And then you select that by pressing in on the select button just like when we were riding it does require you to close that throttle and then uh, reopen it and you've changed ride modes. You can only go into ride modes that take off traction control or ABS while you're stopped, which is why we couldn't get into track mode while we were riding. Taking a look into this display a little bit more, uh, you can get in, see all your riding aids, all your info on the bike here, rider aids, coolant, warning, service settings, uh, a lot of good information there. We can go into the display, we can change brightness, we can change the theme, language, units, date, time, uh, shift indicator, which is their shift light. You can even input your name. Somebody's having a bad day. Uh, journey, you can, you can log your trips. You can uh, do lap timers, monitor your fuel status. Uh, it does have the capability to add the Bluetooth module. So once you've got Bluetooth uh, set up in this, if you add that accessory, you can get into navigation through your phone in the Triumph app, music, actually make and receive phone calls, see text messages, control your GoPro. Uh, I've got intercom set up there between uh, your riders and then additional settings. So 
do want to show you in here when you get down into your settings that you can turn traction control off altogether. Uh, you can it's got the quick shifter so if you wanted to disable that for any weird reason you could um, you can change the way your your turn signals are uh, so I can change between manual self cancel um, and if you get things all boogered up you can get in here and actually do a full factory reset if you've completely messed things up so that's a quick overview here of of what's in the display uh, very good looking display very clean crisp 